All right, guys. Today we've got another IBO HG kit review, and today it's one of my other favorite suits from the series. It is the Gusion Rebake. And as you can tell, it's the Gusion, but uh, they've made it way more Gundam-like. I guess they uh, dug out from underneath all that armor and found a Gundam underneath, and they found this guy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the box real quick before we get to the actual kit because I love this thing and it's it's just really cool. So, you know, kind of what we've gotten used to with the IBO kit, just real nice image here of the Gusion Rebake with this big old shield and rifle here. And then you've got what looks to be another colony right back here. And of course some meteors and stuff because that's where they are in space when they finally start using this thing. And like I said before, it looks like the artwork on the box reflects the progression throughout the series. Down here, of course, it is a Bandai product because it's what we buy. The IBO banner here. Great shot of Akahiro in his new uh, space suit because early on, they weren't wearing them. <laughs> Even while they were fighting in space, they were actually just kind of going shirtless as they tend to do. You got the HG Iron-Blooded Orphans here and you got that Gusion rebake there. Oh, this is just, that is such a nice image. And then we come to the bottom of the box, and you got a great action shot here. He's got his gun off to one side, holding up his shield to stop whatever's coming at him. And then here they show, of course, that you can move the arms like that. So I always like to show off the armpit. Here they show off the back, either the detail or they're showing off that you can mount stuff there because you can, just like all the other Gundams, show on the back of the shield here. We'll cover more of that in detail. Then another great little action pose there. Now this image does show one of the issues with this kit just a little bit, but we'll talk about it more later. Then another shot here, of course, he's holding out his gun, just being awesome. And then customize, because of course with all these kits, you can buy the option kits. And it comes with this huge axe, which it does use in the series. And I believe that says that's actually the uh, number three uh, option kit and we do actually have that so we'll be showing that off here in a little bit come around here of course the same as the top box art IBO HG this is number 13 in the line so we're going back to sort of being in order guys then bandaihobby.net followed by gundam.info check it out come around the back and of course you have the obligatory rear and front facing images here Come here, you get a little bit of a read-up on Akihiro and throughout the story. And he does look pretty cool in his new suit there. Although it does um, almost make him look like kind of a gorilla. <laughs> Those are weird space suits. Jitaketsu.com, go check it out. More of the story mode. If you look here, you see Barbatos is pretty beat up at this point. He, he got kind of shredded by the Kimuras. Um, at that point, of course, you got it here. Warnings of some sort, like I think it says, don't put this in your face. Um, I don't know what that 8 means. I don't know what that means, ages 8 and up. I'm going to go ahead and translate that one day. And then, of course, you got the different type of plastic warnings up here. Please recycle anything you don't use. It is 1,200 yen, so once again, it's a little more costly than the early kits. Illustration is by Koma. Again, the background image is by Saito Yoshinobu, as usual. It's a great image, but it's upside down. Why do they keep making it upside down? That's it for the box. Let's look at this guy and see what he's actually all about. All right, here we have the Gusion rebake out of the box for the first time in months. He was getting lonely in there, guys, but now he's free again to look awesome as usual. Now, from the regular Gusion, this is a big, big change, especially color-wise, because the normal standard Gusion is a big green turtle frog. This thing is um, beige, <laughs> kind of a beige, almost wooden color. And I really love the way they redecoed this guy. Because like I said, they they were taking off the armor in this series. And the first thing you see, they remove that big frog turtle head. And they have a Gundam head underneath. So using a bunch of spare Barbatos parts they had laying around. And a few other bits they borrowed from Tewaz. They managed to build this guy. And they also used quite a bit of the original Gusion parts. As we'll see back here. This nice little butt piece here is totally the whole back of standard Gusion. And we'll show that off in a comparison later. But they also have these nice little shoulder pods up here. 
which are definitely the legs from the previous Gusion because you can still see the regular thrusters. And I did have to do a lot of painting on this guy, and I mean a lot, because for the most part, this guy comes in this beige color. These white parts here, here, and here all had to be hand painted. That's why they don't really look that smooth. The white marker I have is not that great. I fully admit that. And then of course here, these all had to be paint, painted dark gray with my you know favoriteest gray marker ever. Um, these are supposed to be white, and they don't give you a sticker. They don't give you anything to uh, to make that happen. And then up here. Actually, let's go ahead and take them off the stand, get a closer look at this. Up here, all the uh, thruster pods here that they were on the regular Gusion, those all had to be painted. These orange marks in here, those all had to be painted. I had to kind of custom mix up some orange to make that match. Um, I had these little silver bits back in there just because painted this part right here gray just to make it stand out i got i try to make it match as close as i can to the original images because you know they paint them you know before they take those pictures and i like this detail here this is actually where the hammer would uh, peg in on the original version that's kind of cool i like that come around here to the front again and these little tri uh, not triangles squares because squares have four sides guys those weren't uh, colored. Those had to be painted on. Same thing down here on the foot. This part under this little foot armor piece had to be painted white as well to match the way it's supposed to be. Now right here, I did use the sticker. It's one of the few stickers they do give you to make it look a little bit more accurate. And up here is one of the bigger problems with this guy. These shoulder bits right here all come in the beige. You had to use either a sticker or paint these on. I chose to paint all of that on there because, well, it needed it. Because here's a sticker sheet, guys. You know, you would have to fold these stickers all around those edges. And that just, that was not something I really wanted to do. I used a few stickers, as you can see, but definitely not the bigger ones, like the shoulders. And these upper parts of the shoulders right here, those are supposed to be that dark gray. We're not that color to begin with. You had to paint that. You know, it just, it had to take a lot of work. You know, either that or they're going to have to mold a whole lot of separate parts. Come down here to the side skirts, paint it on the bottom part of the side skirt, but use the sticker at the top part there just because it's a detail you would want to do. All right, and then if we look at the head, this is a little bit more custom painting. This right here, this white part, was supposed to be a wraparound sticker. I painted it on as best I could, but I used the good camera sticker right up in there. And same thing on the side of the face, that white part right there. Run with the orange, had to mix up that orange, use a very small brush to do what I could to get these like whisker vents here. And then the same thing with painting on the top horns above there. That's all supposed to be that way. Now, we will talk about one special accessory this guy comes with. If you notice, that head right there, that front camera bit, that looks uh, a little familiar, doesn't it? You know, because Akihiro, he left the Grey's Kai to take over the Gusion after his uh, little brother died. Uh, spoiler warning. So, this guy borrows some parts from some of that too. And what you have here is what I call the Gray's Head Gundam. So when he first arrives, he's got this head on. And you can see that is a very, very Gray's-like image. Same kind of front camera, very, you know, not Gray's like, let's be honest here. And the V fins are rotated back like this. Now, this version, the head does not transform. As you just saw, you just swap them out. So, you've got the regular Gundam revealed head here, if I can get some light on it. And you've got what I call the Gray's version of the head. He doesn't use it very often. This version, I did use the stickers on, but also I had to apply some paint to it. So, these are wraparound stickers up here, the wraparound sticker here, the sticker for the chin part there. All had to be replaced. But I like that they include that secondary head in there because he did come from being a Graze pilot. So they actually borrowed some leftover Graze parts to make a Gundam head. Because like I said, they were using spare parts and they built this guy. But since we were looking at the head, let's go ahead and get a little close up. <laughs> let's go ahead and we'll check out some articulation here. He does have the standard spin around double ball joint head. But because of the way his collar is, 
you can't actually turn it all the way around. It can tilt forward that much, it can tilt back that much, side to side, not so much. Now it does have the standard HG double ball joint neck in there, but as usual, the neck isn't what does the work. It's actually just the ball joint for the head. And we come over here to the shoulders. It does have standard Gundam shoulders, so it's got the ball joint up here that swivels upward, and then you get some of this arm ugh, hinge goes way up in there. It's a very stiff arm, guys. Now, the shoulder armor itself does not move separately. It is fully attached right in here, and actually the arm pegs in here, so it's a little bit different than the standard Gundams. It has the uh, biceps, very similar to the original uh, Barbatos arms. Like I said, it used a lot of spare parts from Barbatos. It does have bicep rotation, but just like Barbatos, it gets a little in its own way when you rotate too far. It's got the nice, I believe, single jointed elbow, but it does bend really well. I do love these really big elbow guards, because otherwise this guy would be very similar. These forearms are very similar to Barbatos. We'll probably compare that in a minute. Standard uh, Gundam hands with just got the big hole there for whatever weapons go through there And what weapon will go in there guys? We'll find out soon you get in here the Standard if I can get it to move Body rocking so it's got the hinge up in here the pivot point as usual now I will admit on mine I had to do a little surgery guys before I did the review I had to open them up because it kept coming apart and it was incredibly loose just like the Ryusei Go was, so I had to put it back together, add a tiny little bit of glue just to keep it all together and tighten it up a little bit. You do get some great waist articulation. You can go all the way around. It kind of runs into some things just with the elbow here because that butt armor is pretty big. So you can spin all the way around. Now that particular joint is a little bit loose. It is just a ball joint, so be careful. It's a single peg basically holding up your whole thing. And then once again, I love what the details they have in there with the hydraulics for holding up the main body. Come to the side, you get these standard uh, side flaps, <laughs> side skirts that do that. And of course, they swivel just like that. Front skirts, well, they're front skirts. They're very similar to the Barbatos, as usual, because they just took the Barbatos bits and made them a little bit custom. They, they threw this guy together in like a couple weeks in the show. So that's impressive. They can build... Brand new mobile suits that way. But as usual with these uh, front skirts, I did cut them, make them separate. And come down to the hips. And it does have the hip, the big hip swivel right in there, crotch swivel. So you can actually get a little bit of turn out of the legs. I don't know why they do that, honestly. I mean, it's a cool gimmick. I just don't understand the purpose of it. And then you can do the splits fairly well. The side skirts get in the way just, just a little, but they can go full 180. Get up here, you get the big thigh swivel. But we'll come down to the leg armor, and it is ridiculous. Now, compared to the Barbatos, it, it's very similar. But, you know, it's just much bigger. And actually a little bit less detail. I mean, you do get some nice panel lining areas. Very similar leg vents. And these I did not have to paint. These actually came in that orange, thank God. And come back here, and you can actually see the back of the leg is very similar. Because the inside, all up in here, is exactly the same as Barbatos. Get the real big cover back here. Add a tiny little silver details there, just like I painted the silver hoses. And you come down to the foot, and it is a standard kind of Gundam foot with the ball joint up in there. And then the ankle tilt is really severe. Stiff, though, so that's always good. And then, as usual, Gundam foot tilt. So you get that real good front foot tilt. And even this little weird chunky upper foot armor does get its own little pivot point there. I don't know why. I'm going to be perfectly honest. don't know why it needed that, but it does have it. So it's pretty cool. And we'll come back to the back because we're still talking articulation. These pods are articulated, so you can move them around. They swivel like this, so they do pose. They can do things. They do serve a purpose because they are thrusters. And, of course, you can see I painted a little bit here, so it got some silver detail there just to make that stand out. Oh, and there's some bits under there. We'll talk about that when we get to gimmicks and weapons here in a second, guys. I might have to tighten up this uh, hip swivel. Now, one problem I think I had with this guy when he was standing, he had a bad habit of his feet just kind of wanting to slide out from under him. But that's okay. We come over here, and once again, because they do borrow weapons that they get from their dead enemies... You get this rifle, which is very, very similar to a graze gun. 
uh, it's up until about here, it's about the same. So they add like this much, much longer barrel section. And of course you get the, the side ammo clips on either side of the arm. Actually, it's really good for holding it onto it too. I do like that. It just makes it stand out as a little bit different than your standard uh, Gundam slash Gusion. And because he, uh, he does borrow a lot from his Gray's ancestry. <laughs> Yeah, it borrows a lot from the Grays he came from, because that's just where they get those parts. They keep beating down Grays and they keep taking the parts from them, so that's always a good thing. Then we'll talk about his other great big accessory, because this thing really, really does complete the look. And you get the giant axe. This is a beautiful weapon. Like Compared to the axe that I was using with the other Gusion, with the big, you know, spiky on the end, this thing is just... It's kind of elegant and mean. It's just big, sexy axe. And much like the Barbatos Mace, the handle itself actually does have some nice little square pegs that it can hold on to. It actually it lets you hold it in different positions. I find that really neat. Now, if we're talking about the handle real quick, if I can forget, how does it come apart? I think it just slides up in there. Yep, just pops off like that. And for whatever reason, I guess for storage purposes, you can put a little shrinky dink handle on there. Or if you have a much smaller kit using this guy, I guess you can do that. But because Gusion is pretty big, I ain't going to bother with that. He gets the big long handle. And I did paint this. This is my lovely favorite dark gray with some silver accents. Because in the images, it does show that it's got these nice silver edges to the blades. So, go ahead and put it in his hand. Now it is easier to do if you line it up because otherwise you're going to be fighting those uh, square pegs that it's supposed to hold on to. Now this middle part right here, it does allow him to hold it in multitude of angles. Let me slide that back, get a little bit better look at it. That is just evil. <laughs> now he does get the axe slightly later in the show, but it is still a very, very awesome weapon that he can hold. Now, we'll come back to some of the other gimmicks that this guy has, because he does still have another gimmick back here that's technically a weapon. It's not just his butt. This is, in fact, his shield. So, I guess the armor on the, the actual Gusion was so tough that they actually took it apart and made it into a shield. You get this peg back here that holds it onto his butt. And if you pull that off, and I believe it is just... Put it on like so. You can turn his arm around like this. And he's got a little peg hole right back here. It goes right there. It actually fits just right in there. Got to line it up just right, guys. Okay. And now you get Gusion Rebake with his big old shield, gun, and axe. And that is just awesome. Because now he's ready for battle. And of course you saw that in the uh, promo images on the box. But this guy now is awesome. Look at that. That is just an intimidating guy. Oh, this is why it's still one of my favorite kits. Even though it's you know not the same as good old Frog Turtle. But with all the aspects this guy has with the Grey's parts. The fact that he's more Gundam like, like he should be. And the fact they took so much of the original kit. Not to mention the other things that he can do into it. And... Back here, I might as well point this out. He does have weapon storage, so you can take that big old axe and clip it in there. Now, it does have that just like Barbatos has on his back, but uh, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and set the axe aside for a second, and we're going to talk about his last little gimmick here with these great little pods. They're not just thrusters, guys. They serve a separate purpose, and they are, in fact, arms. This is so crazy he made a Gundam with four arms and in fact these are Gray's arms <laughs> like they can pivot a little bit they've got a little bit of I guess you would want to call a bicep rotation uh, I guess this one's blocked up hold on let me rotate it down uh, there it goes okay so it's got a swivel up in here kind of an accordion joint and you can pull these guys out and it actually does have some bicep swivel if I can rotate him around here and get a better look at it. 
and it is it is legitimately a graze hand. Now it occurs to me these hands are backwards. This is the wrong hand for this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap those. <laughs> I never even noticed it until just now. I got the I got the hands backwards. I guess because I assembled it facing the other way, not even thinking about it. Come on, get out of there, buddy. There we go. Put that in there. This thing just gets better and better. And it is just a standard peg hole. It does have the single jointed elbow there. Same thing over here. And these hands can in fact hold weapons. So if we want to bring in the axe while he's wielding his shield, he can wield his axe in his backhand. <laughs> the word backhand just took on a whole new meaning. Oh my goodness, this thing is ridiculous, guys. Come on, look at that. He's, he's holding weapons with as many hands as he has. I don't see here. Maybe I can find another gun or weapon laying around. I'm sure I've got plenty here, right? Okay, let's borrow. Oh, let's borrow this guy here. I'll go ahead and borrow the cleaver from his former self, and now he can hold that. And that is just awesome. Arm to the teeth, guys. It's just great. Look at that. That is so just awesome. In and of itself. So, just real quick, I will compare it to his predecessor. Push him off to the side here. And we will pull out the good old frog turtle. So you can really see the comparison. Oh, that didn't want to peg in there. We'll go right here with it. Now, he does get away from his hammer, sadly, but it is what it is. And you can see here just how similar some of the parts are. So you can see the front there. He doesn't use the front armor for anything, nor does he use the shoulders for anything. But rotate to the back, and you can totally see back vents are totally that shield, that uh, <laughs> shield. Couldn't think of the word, guys. Sorry. And it's just, and you can see here, those leg armor. There are totally the shoulder bits there. So we got Gusion with Gusion here, guys. It's just so cool. Yeah, sorry, it's not all framed worth crap because this Gusion is set up like he's going to be on his stand, and his uh, future self is not just there yet. So we'll set this off to the side. Put him back where he belongs. Right about there. Take this guy. Now what we will do, as we usually do, we will put it on the full IBO stand, guys. Bear with me just a second. Alright guys, here we have the good old IBO display set up here. We're going to go ahead and add Mr. Rebake here to the fray and if i remember correctly he was just back here which you're not going to be able to see he was basically just standing behind his future self i'm gonna tilt it forward just a little bit now i didn't plan on using the extra arms this way but now i am because <laughs> it just looks so cool i'm gonna go ahead and do it that way oh, he wants to Pivot a little bit. Got to balance him. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. And you can see Gujin right behind himself right there. Let me zoom out a little here. You can see the whole display, how it's coming together. And this is... Uh, it, it's something satisfying about seeing it come together. And uh, for the Eagle Eye viewers, Kimaris here did actually get moved because I had him too far over. I had him in the spot where the uh, Grace Ritter will be. So let's set this down here, rotate this. I kind of need a Lazy Susan to show this guy off. Maybe when I'm done, I'll, I'll borrow a Lazy Susan just for that purpose. Might lower Frog Gusion down just a peg if I can. I think he's up just a little too high. There we go. That feels better. Okay. So now we've got Frog Gusion down just a little bit right there. So we've got, technically, okay, so we've got, this is a cool setup here, and I did this on purpose. So you've got Grace Kai right here. So that was Akihiro's first suit. 
it evolves into Ryu said Go later on, which Shino starts to use. Gujin here eventually gets remade and piloted by Akihiro and turned into that. That's not an accident that I kind of put all those together. Plus, they're the side heroes and the other great pilots of Tekadon. So, that is it for this review. I hope you enjoy watching these guys come together because I really love the IBO line. You need to look into it, especially like guys like this with the uh, Gujin and how it evolves over time. But remember to like and subscribe. Check out all the other IBO reviews and all my other Gumpla build videos and Shogi quickies. But that's it for today, guys. And remember to keep on building.